Since outside is sunny and bright, why don't you make your bookshelf sunny and bright too? Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through some books with yellow covers that I definitely think you need to check out. Not just because yellow is my favorite color, but also because I am one of the hosts for Team Yellow for the amazing readathon, which is being run by Brie from Fort Paul's in a book all across the month of August. The readathon is structured in a way that you get the prompt after about three days and then you can just fit your reading in across it. But if you read a book with your team color on it, you get extra bonus points. And as a captain for Team Yellow, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to help you gain some extra points if you're taking part in the readathon, and even if you're not, these books are definitely going to brighten up your stuff anyway. I have tried to be as wide reaching as I can with the genres that I am going to come in with here, but due to what I read, there are quite a couple of contemporary and romance recommendations. So I think let's start with there and then go down the list. Let's start out with the contemporary books first of all. First one up is The Girl with a Louding Voice by Abi Dare, which is set in Nigeria and is about a young girl who is brought in as one of the extra wives for one of the chieftains in her community. Woman Eating by Claire Coda is a book that is set in London where our main character Lydia is a vampire and her source of food is starting to run out. So it's looking like she's gonna have to start eating human flesh. Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Evaristo is also set in London and is much more multicultural cultural. It tells the tale of 12 women whose lives kind of intertwine with each other, how they intermingle with each other, and how their backgrounds have shaped them as women. Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang is absolutely everywhere at the moment, and it is about June, who takes over the manuscript of her friend Athena when Athena passes away in a car crash, except that Athena's story is not really June's to tell. Wild Things by Laura Kay tells the story of Elle, who together with three of her friends moves to the countryside and takes up a whole new life for herself. When she discovers that her life is getting a little bit drab and boring, she puts together a list of 12 things she really wants to get done by the end of the year. Olive by Emma Gannon is the story of Olive, who finds her life in a little bit of a crossroads when her friends are starting to settle down, get married, have children, and this is not the path that Olive wants to take for her life. Filter This by Sophie White is a fantastic look at social media culture, Instagram influencers, and just how far some people are willing to go to get the life that they think they deserve. Beach Read by Emily Henry is about January and Gus, who are both authors. They are going through some writing block at the moment, so they decide to swap manuscripts with each other and try to give a hand at writing each other's genre. Moving on to romance, and we will start with Love and Other Flight Delays by Denise Williams is a collection of three short stories that are all set around the airport. So if you are anyone who wants to add a little bit more travel into the amazing readathon, this is a great way to do so. The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent follows Birdie, who takes a job on as a sommelier in a four star hotel in the Highlands of Scotland. But it turns out that this is not the dream job for Birdie. It's actually the dream job for one of her other friends who is a high class sommelier and Birdie doesn't know the first thing about wine. The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren tells the story of Olive and Ethan who are sent on their sibling's honeymoon when everyone else at the wedding gets food poisoning, but Olive and Ethan have to pretend to enjoy each other's company when deep down they generally can't stand each other. The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren tells the story of Jess and River who are brought together by a dating app that was thought of by River where everyone is joined together based on how compatible their DNA is Jess and River have a DNA compatibility of almost 100%. The Split by Laura Kay tells the story of Ali, who retreats to her father's home in Sheffield after a breakup and reunites with her childhood friend Jeremy, and then the two of them spend pretty much the whole book training for a marathon. The Bride Test by Helen Huang is about Kai and Esme. Esme is flown over to the US from Vietnam to be a bride for Kai, who is suffering from social anxiety, has some ADHD, and she really starts to bring him out of his shell. The Minute I Saw You by Paige Toon tells the story of Hannah and Sonny who meet each other on holiday and decide to have a relationship, just a short term fling, but it turns out that fate has something longer on the cards for them. My Favourite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren tells the story of Millie who makes an online persona for dating apps and accidentally matches with one of her best friends with whom she has just recently slept with and there's a whole story of subterfuge here about do you really know the person that you're talking to? The Roommate by Rosie Dannon is about Clara and Josh who move in together. Clara was brought up in a very middle class, well-to-do area. 
and she is kind of going into the world for the first time and is shocked to learn that her new roommate is an adult entertainer. Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert is about Danny, the middle of the Brown sisters who is a PhD student and fake dates her friend, the security guard at the university that she works with to help to bring up a little bit more of a notoriety about the rugby club that he helps out with. The Fiancé Farce by Alexandria Belflor is about Tansy and Gemma who also fake date each other in order to help out Tansy's kind of ailing bookshop and also to give Gemma a little bit more of breathing space with her family. Flow Plan by Trish Dollar is about Anna who is grieving the loss of her fiance and in order to make herself feel better goes out on the boat trip that they had already planned to go on except that she is not the most skilled at seafaring so she goes with Keen who is a lot better sea legs than she does. The Love Wager by Lynn Painter is about Jack and Hallie who have just come out of a one night stand together but have also matched with each other on a dating app so they decide to be each other's wingman and end up falling in love with each other. The Perfect Find by Tia Williams is about Jenna who is looking to get back into the world of magazine writing by signing up for a pretty millennial focused online website and falls in love with the videographer who works for the website that is about 15 to 20 years her junior. For children's and YA books, pretty much any of the books in the Babysitter's Club by Anne M. Martin are going to hit here because quite a lot of them have got a yellow bricked house on the background, but there are also quite a few other books that you can take up as well. Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman is about Nick and Charlie and their school trip to Paris where they are not the only ones falling for each other. In a connected story, Nick and Charlie, also by Alice Oseman, tells the story of Nick and Charlie as Nick is about to go off to university and Charlie is left behind as he is a year behind him. Bill's New Frock by Anne Fine is a fantastic story about gender identity where we're following Bill who wakes up one morning, puts on a dress, goes off to school and lives his life just wearing a dress. Date Me Bryson Keller by Kevin Van White is about Kai who asks Bryson Keller out on a date knowing that Bryson is under a bed where he cannot say no to anybody and Kai is the first guy who has ever asked Bryson out. Destination Anywhere by Sarah Barnard follows Peyton who having gone through yet another disappointment in her hometown takes her dad's credit card with her, heads off to the airport and just books the first flight that she can find and discovers herself and a whole new batch of friends along the way. The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness is the story of Mikey who lives in a world of superheroes and superpowers but is just a generic guy like us. He doesn't have any superpowers and he doesn't have any ambitions to save the world. He just wants to get out of high school. Next up is Thrillers starting out with Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. This is the story of Sally Diamond who when her father passes away puts his body into the farm's incinerator as she thinks he had wanted her to do but it turns out that this is the catalyst for Sally finding out exactly who she was and what her real family was like. A Keeper by Graham Norton tells the story of Elizabeth who has come back to Ireland from New York to sort out her mother's home and belongings after her mother passes away. While she's cleaning everything out, she finds a small stack of letters that are addressed to a woman she has never heard of and ultimately ends up finding out the truth about her family. Lucy Foley's The Hunting Party tells the story of a group of friends who all went to Oxford together and have booked out a cottage in the Scottish Highlands to celebrate New Year's Eve. Two days later, one of their party turns up dead. Moving on next to nonfiction, Everyone You'll Hate Is Going To Die By Daniel Sloss is a kind of a retelling of the jokes that he has told on stage and it also starts out with a statistic that 20,000 divorces, breakups and engagement call-offs have been caused by one of the jokes that Daniel Sloss has told. Taste by Stanley Tucci is Stanley's memoir about his life growing up with Italian immigrant parents, how much of an impact food has had on his life and also the moment that he went through throat and mouth cancer where he couldn't eat as much as he loved to and as much as he wanted to. Women Don't Owe You Pretty by Florence Given is a guide to relationships, sex, money, love, everything that every person identifying as a woman needs to read. Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton is Dolly's memoir, not just talking about romantic love, but also talking about platonic love for the best friend that she's had for so long. The tabs that you can see here are actually recipes that I have gone back to time and time again. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy chronicles Jeanette, who was a child actress's relationship with her mother that turned into abusive, financially, sexually, and physically. I Feel Bad About My Neck by Nora Ephron is a collection of essays by Nora about living in New York, about working as a screenwriter, and is basically something that anybody who was a fan of her movies should read.
Parsnip Spotter by Joe Lysett is a collection of all of the jokes that he has told and some of the little email trickery and blackguarding that he has gotten up to. Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson takes a look at Jenny's struggles with severe depression and how that has actually forced her to live her life to the fullest. Maybe You Should Talk to Somebody by Lori Gottlieb is the story of Lori, who is a therapist working in New York and the chronicles that she had with a particularly difficult client that she had worked with for over a year. In terms of historical fiction, Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid is the story of tennis player Carrie Soto who comes back for one more year after retirement when it turns out that her world record is a little bit in jeopardy. Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore is the story of Annabelle who has won a scholarship to Oxford as one of the first female students in the university and to earn her place at the university she has to get involved with the suffragette movement. Dear Mrs. Bird by AJ Pierce tells the story of Emmeline Lake, who was taken on as a secretary by a woman's magazine in the Blitz in London and is taken on as the assistant to Mrs. Bird, who doesn't particularly enjoy talking about a lot of topics in the letters that she receives. However, Emmeline is about to turn this magazine right on its head. Infamous by Lex Karcher is the story of Edith or Eddie who is 22 years old and at her debutante ball when it turns out that her friend who she thought she was super close with is now starting to think about settling down and getting married and it throws Edie for an entire loop. Finally some sci-fi recommendations. Before the Coffee Gets Cold Tales of the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi is about a cafe in Tokyo where patrons can come in, drink a cup of coffee and travel back in time once they adhere to a specific set of rules. This follows four people who all travel in time to try and correct something in their lives. Never Let Me Go by Katsuji Guru is about four students who are all studying at the same college and it turns out that their lives are completely different to the way that we thought they were. Those are a selection of yellow books that I genuinely think that you need to go and check out this year. What book of those is a favourite of yours or what is your favourite book with a yellow cover that I've missed out on? If you'd love to leave me a comment but you can't think of anything you'd like to say, then just leave me the yellow heart emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.